the Waco showdown is still burning. The FBI did not set that fire. Six years later, extras Phil Schumann goes back to ground zero. See who's living on the ashes of Koresh's compound. They systematically took it in turns, not only to spray the gas, but to demolish the building. Exclusive, the Waco survivors speak. They call it murder, a violent terrorist act against them by their own government. Now, as the feds begin to admit what they really did, Waco survivors are breaking their silence. What they did was no accident. This was a long planned out uh, assault. Next, from the ashes of Koresh's compound, Phil Schumann with an extra exclusive. What happened at Waco? It's called Pager Light device really help you make a match? 1993, the standoff between federal agents and Branch Davidians lasts 51 days. Then, David Koresh's Waco compound goes up in a ball of flames. After years of denial, the FBI has finally admitted it used flammable devices that final day. Still, burning questions remain, so the government has launched a full-blown investigation. Now, surviving Branch Davidians are breaking their silence, accusing the government of murder and cover-up. Phil Schumann has this extra exclusive. It's the fire that won't go out. Well, we didn't start it. There was no way we would have ever committed any kind of suicide. Now, after smoldering for more than six years, the ashes of Waco have suddenly reignited. These men that, from the government, they want to keep everything hidden. But this time, it's besieged feds who are taking the heat and surviving Branch Davidians who are fanning the flames of an explosive scandal. Did federal agents deliberately start the deadly inferno? I blame them for murder. I blame them for all that happened. The road that leads back to the doomed Branch Davidian complex in Waco, Texas is strewn with bodies, cover-ups, and conspiracy theories. The government has always insisted Davidian leader David Koresh lit the infamous fire that killed some 80 men, women, and children on April 19, 1993. But in a startling development, the FBI now admits it lied about what really happened. Investigators have seized FBI videotape that proves highly flammable tear gas canisters were used in the final hours of the 51-day Waco siege. I think there's an opening there that you may be able to shoot through the doorway. Now, tall weeds, trash, bulldozed rubble are largely all that remains of the Branch Davidian complex where Koresh and his followers died in that horrible inferno. There are headstones honoring the fallen, charred shells of Davidian buses, and an old Airstream trailer crushed by government tanks. And here in these desolate killing fields, I would discover living testimony that may help unravel the mystery of Waco. They systematically took it in turns, not only to spray the gas, but to demolish the building. Clive Doyle is one of only nine Davidians who got out of the blaze alive. Incredibly, he's actually back living on that same property in this mobile home, keeping the memory of Koresh and his doomed flock alive. Why stay? Why be so close to a reminder of what happened? And because we believe it's God's turf, you know, I mean, uh, I think it's worth fighting for. Doyle managed to escape the burning compound through a hole in a wall just as it burst into flames. And I'm looking down at the building, I see this big ball of flame go up uh, like an explosion. And I wrote everybody else off. Tragically, Clive's 18-year-old daughter, Sherry, did not make it out. Despite these revelations about the use of flammable tear gas canisters, the Attorney General this week still insisted the FBI did not start the fire. That fire was set by David Koresh and the people in that building. But Clive Doyle and other surviving Davidians flatly deny that and say nobody should believe the government. It seems like their initial reaction is to lie first and you only admit that you're lying if you get caught. Such a beautiful girl. While Clive Doyle simmers, fellow Davidian Sheila Martin suffers. She lost her husband and four of her children in that holocaust. It was just too much to, to think that they had gone like that. They were smart children and they were trying to be good. Sheila had surrendered to the FBI weeks earlier on the promise that her family would also be allowed to leave safely. My children stayed and my husband stayed because they believed these men outside. I call it murder. That's what I call it. Catherine Madison also escaped the Davidian complex before the fiery finale of death and destruction. She, like the others, claimed the government deliberately set the blaze. What was the reason for the fire? When they saw we weren't going to give in, they had to get rid of us. They had to get rid of us. 
they had to cover up everything that had happened. There's always new federal lies that we are forced to counter here. Texas talk radio personality Alex Jones has been crying murder and cover up from day one of the Waco horror. These are thugs who wanted to engage in terrorism against the American people. And I say their terrorism has failed and this horrendous lie is starting to unravel. The surviving Davidians say the same thing. That's what they do for a job, as they, they lie. When I tell what I tell, I'm telling the truth. And if people accept it, fine. We just believe that God would not let the truth be hidden. And Waco keeps burning. And just today, several federal prosecutors in Texas have been relieved from the case, including one who had complained of, quote, a possible government cover-up. Meanwhile, surviving Davidians are hoping the new investigations will lead to the release of more than a dozen of their sect members from prison.